Hello, how are we? So, two things. Firstly, I want to say a huge, huge thank you to all you guys who are giving me really nice feedback on my hair and how desperate I am for a haircut. Really grateful for that, guys. Thank you so much. I know it's wild, and I've tried to give myself a, a chop and thin it out, but obviously all the uh, hairdressers are closed due to lockdown. Um, I've got a little mullet growing at the back, which is quite fun anyway, so. <laughs> but thanks for noticing. Um, the second thing I wanted to mention is I've just started a Facebook group called Street Photography Creators, so jump over, I'll put a link in the description. Um, the idea of the group is basically so we can help each other out. It's more so about uh, learning and inspiring others and sharing locations and obviously arranging meetups and stuff like that. Um, but not just about putting images on there. Um, I, want, I want a platform that people can actually feel that they can ask for help or people can offer help and stuff like that. So um, it's just a way we're all learning. I obviously want to improve my photography as well. So if you're new to street photography, it might be a really, really good platform for you. So jump over, check, take a look and obviously submit some images. But it's all going to be nice, honest, um, polite critique. Okay, so it's not no nastiness or anything on there. So don't worry about that. Uh, it's all about learning. So in this video series, what I thought I'd do is on the same vein as learning. Um, I mentioned in a recent video about how we can learn from others, how others could uh, critique our work, and, um, and we could critique their work. Obviously, ask permission for people whose work you're going to crit critique if you don't know them. Um, but it's just about how looking at how other people approach their photography, approach their street photography, um, approach their settings, approach their composition, and then obviously the editing process at the end as well. So what I thought I'd do is I've asked two friends, Dan Goody and Fabian, who have met me on um, some of my street walks. I've met them twice, I think, in London. Really, really nice guys, great photographers. Um, and I've asked them to send me some of their raw files uh, for me to critique and edit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to Lightroom and edit their photographs and look at what they would have been, um, try and work out what they'd have been looking for in the image, what they, what they would have been drawn to in the image, and then obviously see if there's any areas that, that perhaps the technical settings weren't right or something like that. Now I'm not ever gonna try and come across as being somebody who knows everything about this because obviously I'm learning as well. But obviously an external opinion on it, just sort of help everybody learn and, and stuff like that. So yeah, you can learn from others' mistakes, learn from your own mistakes. Either way, we'll jump on over and have a look at these two images, but I'll put their Instagram um, underneath their images so you can check them out. I'm going and put the link in the description as well. So do check them out on Instagram. Really, really nice guys and great photographers. So we'll jump over to Lightroom now, have a look at these two images. Now I just want to stress as well, I haven't actually seen the edited, the, the original photographer's edited images of either of these photographs, okay? So it'll be interesting to see how my image looks, if it looks anything like theirs um, at the end. So yeah, I'll show both mine and theirs at the end of the, the video so we can have a look. Anyway, we'll dive over to, to Lightroom now and, and get cracking. So we've got these two images um, from Dan's on the left and Fabian's on the right. Um, now, Instantly, the one on the left to me can only be a black and white. I really, really like that as a black and white, but I quite like the colours and the tones and the one on the right, so that will probably stay colour. Um, but yeah, we'll jump over and have a look. So we'll just go into the develop module and get cracking. So as I said, so look at the looking at the, the technical aspect of the image, um, I think Dan shoots, I say this is Dan Goodies, so I think Dan shoots fully manual. So he's gone for F8, uh, 500th of a second, so nice shallow, nice, massive depth of field basically it shoots on a Fuji so crop sensor so you're getting a massive depth of field at f8 five hundredth of a second obviously just to freeze any mo motion and then the ISO just pushed to the right but he's got the exposure this is banging um, this is the raw straight out of camera so he's got the exposure absolutely perfect so there's a white area of the image here a massive white area and obviously that reflects in the histogram there but he couldn't have got the histogram any further to the right if he wanted to and obviously the left of the histogram is all this black area here there's a very very small amount of mid-tones which will be this area down here and some of the railings but the majority is a black extreme contrast black and white but the the settings are absolutely perfect and i imagine he would have focused around about there on on that part of the bridge um, but yeah settings wise perfect really and obviously he wants to get the depth of field and stuff in the image um, so what i'll do now is i'll turn it black and white um, but for some reason my acros isn't coming up there so we'll choose black and white 03 uh, which gives us a nice contrasty i'll tell you what we'll do we'll, we won't do that we'll start with adobe monochrome so you guys can do the same so um I'm not going to crop, I said in a recent video, to avoid cropping your images until the last minute because after you're doing your, I mean, the obvious thing for this for this image would be to crop sort of that bottom bit out. 
but we don't know what the editing is going to do and how it's going to affect down here. So what we'll do is we'll leave it uncropped, but also gives us the opportunity for the image to sort of embed any negatives into you. Because if you just get rid of it straight away, it doesn't have that sort of mental effect that next time when you go out with your camera, you're, you're not going to make that mistake because last time that was really annoying you, really bugging you that you didn't, that you had to sit there looking at it. Obviously we could just cheat and crop it out, but we'll leave it for now. Anyway, so let's get the histogram to the right um, as far as we can. Uh, there, I think. That's really, really good. Um, so that's nearly a stop before we start losing the whites. Now I think this white area now, with the difference with landscape photography and street photography, is we don't need to keep any detail. Obviously there will be cloud detail there like that. I wouldn't have that cloud detail. I'd have it really, really, let's reset the uh, double click, reset the highlights. I'd have that area there, just solid white. It doesn't really, so I'd lift the whites there like that. So what we'll do is hold alt, and make sure we've got like a white background there. That's how I, I, I would want this really, really nice sort of clean looking um, white area there, which that now looks really, really nice. Uh, the other thing I'd do is drop the blacks because obviously we've got a lot of detail in the shadows now, which we probably won't want. So drop the blacks just to get rid of some of that detail. See, instantly to me, that's almost a finished image that doesn't really need much at all. Um, and yeah, as I say, landscape photography, you'd never get a histogram there like that because unless that was the sun, you'd never want to clip the sky there like that. But with street photography, you get away with it. So uh, perhaps bring the whites down a touch, but I quite like that, like that. Okay, so what else are we going to do? Um, I'm going to leave the shadows. I'm not going to touch the highlights. I'm not going to touch, I think the tones and everything are fine. We could use the, actually lifting the white balance to give us a bit more detail. If you look at the detail changing as we lift the white balance, that's quite nice there. So I've lifted the white balance to 6.2. Put the clarity up. I always, because it's a Fuji file, I always put the clarity up about 15. Um, but that's about it. I'll come down then. I'll take the sharpening off. I will add the profile corrections built into the lens. I won't put any um, vignette in or anything like that. It doesn't need it because it's just going to darken that corner of the image. I want that. So uh, we don't want that. So we'll go back to the top. Um, at this point, I think I might add a crop. The only thing I could do is drop the shadows a touch, just so it's not too distracting. Only very slightly. I think it will. What, what I'm, I'm starting to get from the image is this diagonal shape here, this, this almost triangle. Now, the only critique I would have seen with the composition so far is that I really would have liked it if that corner there would have come up to the middle here, and then that corner there actually completed the triangle. So if that was a perfect triangle like that, I mean, I know this is the Millennium Bridge in London, I've been, I've been here, so it's pretty much, um, it's a well-photographed location, and it's a really, really cool, really cool place to visit if you've not been. Um, but what I'll do is I'll crop, I'll move the crop up now. Uh, I, don't want, I don't want that on there, I wanna keep the width. I'll keep the entire width of the image. Oh, rotated it slightly. And just bring it up just there, I think. See, I would have liked it to have, I want the black on the right. Yeah, because I, I, I really like that triangle shape and I just think the geom, geom, geometrics, should I say, uh, looks really smart. It's just a shame that that triangle couldn't have gone directly across there. You could almost draw it in if you really wanted to. You could just draw that black line going across. But otherwise, I really like the uh, the really strong lines and everything like that. Um, the only thing I'd do as well, I perhaps have to do it locally, but uh, in Photoshop or something like that, by dropping the shadow, you're actually getting more of a, a mystery area around the, the chap there. And with the shadows being up, you can see too much of the guy's face. Um, and I, th I think I much prefer having it look more of a mysterious look like that. Um, but obviously then that's darkening this area here. So we could darken that there and then put a grad over this corner and just brighten that up a touch if we wanted to. I suppose we could do that. Uh, yeah, we could do that. Um, the other thing I would do is get rid of, this looks like a little flag, it's a flag in the corner there. Get rid of that. And I'd get rid of this sticker here. But otherwise, I wouldn't touch that. Let's go over to Fabian's image and come back to Dan's image in a minute. So 
we'll have a look at this. I say not going to crop it at all, but we're just going to get the exposure right. There's nothing white in the image, so the histogram doesn't need to go all the way to the right. But we do want some contrast, so we'll, you know, we'll go about there. Um, what else can we do? See, with this shot, I really like the tones. I'm not entirely sure what drew Fabian to the image. I'm not sure if it's just the light, if it's the environment, it's the way the people are dressed, because there's really cool um, shadows over here on the left-hand side. The pillar is really, really smart, but I feel like the image is kind of left-hand side balanced. So the bit, I'll, I'll say avoid cropping until the last minute, but just to show you, the bit I like is kind of that, a little bit of that tone on the left-hand side. I don't think I can have any of this white area here because I th to me, like there, it needs a bit of black going around it. So I feel like that has to come in, perhaps to there. And then just include that top bit of building there, which looks really, really nice and modern. So all I'll do then is I'll, I'll straighten up that line. So I'm going to crop this one because I'm, I know that that bottom part of the image is black and it's not going to, it's not going to change, is it? So that's fine. Um, but I'm just trying to work out how I can make the image balance because yeah, it's quite a difficult one to balance. Um, but I won't touch the shadows, and what I'll do is I'll lift the whites a bit just to get us a bit of contrast. I'll drop the blacks just to make sure that it's, it keeps the image simple because I think there's a bit of a distraction in the background here. So try and keep the image as simple as possible. Um, but I do want this contrast, so what I'll do is I'll lift the whites up a bit. Now what's distracting me in this in this particular image is the yellow. It might have been something that he was drawn to, but yellow there and yellow there kind of conflicts a little bit with the um, with the, the sort of tones of, of the surroundings. So if I come down to the split toning in saturation and go down to yellow and drop that yellow a little bit, so it just takes the emphasis off the yellow almost, make it white. To me that looks a bit more neutral, it's not so distracting. Obviously I could go into Photoshop and locally select that, that area there. In fact, if you click that, at these tools here, you can actually, I think, you can actually adjust them just by clicking. See these little buttons here? If you click them, you can you can select the that specific area. So that's okay. I feel like it needs a bit of a glow because obviously it looks a bit fake without the glow because it's a very warm environment, isn't it? The light, the light that's coming in from the right is very warm. So I'll leave that there. Um, now the exposure's gone nuts now, so we need to bring that up a touch. Um, what else can we do? Let's drop the shadows just to give us that bit more punch. I really like the line that's formed through the lady there. That looks really cool. And I like the shadow here but I'm not seeing the clarity enough in the image. I'm still feeling that the, my favorite part of the image is over on the left-hand side and there's nothing really on the right-hand side for me to balance. Is that straight? It doesn't look straight, does it, for some reason? Let's try and straighten that line again. Let's try that. I don't know why that doesn't. I think that maybe the shadow fall off at the top is a bit more. Right? Maybe that's what it is. Um, but we'll try with the white balance, try and tone the white balance down. Maybe it's the orange that's distracting me a little bit. So we'll do that and then lift it up again. So we've got rid of that orange tone now. I think I quite like that. The, 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 orange, the lady in the background, let's lift the vibrance up because the lady in the background um, in the orange coat is now falling into the background because the, co the colour in her coat had been sucked away when I changed the white balance, when I cooled it down. And I really, I think that orange, see, if I was if, if I was waiting for the shot, if I'd seen this composition, I would have probably waited for this lady to go and then gone in a lot closer and just took that shot there because that section there, without that lady in the way, with that lady stood in that light, with this sh shadow going up as a leading line pointing to her, for me is a fantastic shot, especially if you could get that square in at the top as well. So there's a lovely bit of, bit of geometry there with the lines and everything. But these tones are great. I'm not so sure about the one on the left. But definitely a portrait shot without this lady in the black coat in the foreground. Just, I mean, you could almost Photoshop her out, to be honest with you. you could, yeah, you could easily Photoshop her out. Um, but that's it. You'd have to crop right in there. You'd have to go. 
you'd have to go right in. You'd get, use that square at the top to balance the photograph. Yeah, if she wasn't if she wasn't there. Yeah, I'm not. I've just it's just that it's just that pillow on the right. It's just I can't decide whether or not it needs something on the right hand side, but I can't work out whether or not the pillars. It needs something there to to balance the image, so I've got to leave it in. But we'll bring the white balance down a touch bit more, and then lift the exposure up again. All the way. Now I'm feeling that that lighter area can be white, so I don't feel so bad about pushing the exposure to the right. We're nearly at two stops. I don't want to. I don't want it to look. Push it too far. Okay, so I think I'd go adjusting the crop now because I think it's too long. I think if I pulled that crop down a touch at the top, oh, let's release that. Uh, pull the crop down a touch at the top, I pull it up at the bottom, and then let's have a look at that. Okay, it's a really nice frame. It's got a lot going on in the background here though, which I think if I drop the shadows, they might disappear. Yep, they're disappearing. Shadows down. I'm a bit close at the top there now, and I let's move that up. So I need that black border around there to be the same there as it is there. So I've got that that border going around there, which matches. I think. Do you know what? I probably leave this here. The only two things I get rid of. It's blowing a gale outside, so I'm wondering about that that window. <laughs> it sounds like it's coming in. Um, so I'm worried about that wind. It's dreadful. The only thing I'd get rid of is that light there, these two lights here. I can't drop the shadows anymore. I could probably drop the blacks a bit. And then bring the white balance down, cool it down. As I've started to cool the image down, probably white balance to the left. I'm liking it more. I'm liking it more. It's almost a spot colour image now. I quite like it now. See the difference between the two white balances is unbelievable. But to me, I think I prefer the more blue. I originally, when I was when I first seen the raw, <clears throat> I like the um, I like the warm tones in it. But now I've edited it. I don't know. This is maybe one of the ones that when you edit when you look at revisit an image the next day, you probably think, oh, what was I doing with that white balance? But if I brought it back up, it's really orange now. So, yeah, I think I think that's probably where I'd leave it, to be honest with you. So what I'll do is I'll put um, have a quick look at Dan's again. Yeah, I just need to tidy that area. I'll put the finished files up when I've gone through Photoshop. Got rid of that line there. Got rid of this area here, um, and I'll put. Dan's and Fabian's um, edited versions as well, just to see how they compare. I'm really interested, as I say, I haven't seen their images, so I'm really interested to see how different. I think Dan's will be quite similar to mine because I've been uh, well, I've been watching both of their uh, Instagrams for, for for some time, so I get you get a feeling of how people edit. But Dan edits very similar to me. He likes his contrasty heavy blacks and stuff, stuff like that. I think uh, Fabian spends a lot more time editing his images and likes a lot more creativity in them than than myself and Dan. But I don't know, I might be wrong. But we'll in, be interested to see how they both look. And um, yeah. I'll, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing. So it's an interesting concept, just the idea of not of editing somebody else's pictures blind. But anyway, I'm going to edit it there. Oh, sorry, I'm going to edit it there. I'm going to leave it there. I'll, as I say, I'll put both images up at the end of the video. So do check out their Instagram, have a look. And um, I've got a feeling that Fabian will do a much better job editing his images. Actually, now I'm looking at it. I think I've, over, I've I think it's too bright. Okay, let's bring the. Let's go there. Yeah, let's go there. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I think the lady in the middle is, is ruining the shot for me. I love the lady at the background, but the lady in the middle is just, but yeah, really nice, really nice location anyway. Um, yeah, well anyway, I'll leave it there. As I say, check out the images, check out the original um, jump over, say hello to Fabian and Dan. And um, yeah, if you want to jump over to the Facebook group and stick some of your pictures up, then we'll, uh, 
we'll perhaps uh, feature your, your photographs in some upcoming videos. But I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon. Um, please hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed the video, guys. Take care. Thanks for watching.